So now we're going to take a quick look at URL mapping and URL reversing. This is, has to do with basically routing and it really allows us to generate links from one page to another. So we're in the middle of a page and we want to make a link to a different page. We've got to figure out what the string of that is. So again, we're, we're sitting here in the middle of our code, we're in the views, and this URL mapping is basically a set of functions that allow us to read the urls.py. In a way, if all these functions didn't exist that allowed us to read urls.py, we would write a bunch of functions to do that. And so these are just now part of Django. And so often these are used in the view. Uh, sometimes they're actually used right inside urls.py to come up. So it's like, if you know the name of a view, what would be the URL to get to that view? And sometimes views have just a URL and sometimes they're a URL plus a parameter. And that's all set up here. And so it's like, give me a link to a view, please. And then Django looks in the urls.py, potentially across the applications and gives you that string. And it's just to avoid hard coding the strings. That's really the idea. And so this is just a common problem. This is the documentation right from the Django website. You don't want to hard code these things. You actually can, but then if you rename an application, the whole idea is you could make a Django project that had four or five applications, and then you could reuse some of those in a different Django project and add some more applications. So, you know, you don't want these applications to have too many hard coded decisions. And it's, it might be easier to hard code some of these things, but, um, <clears throat> it is actually in the long run much easier from a maintenance perspective. And so it's just a, it's better maintenance. It's another don't repeat yourself or doing a table lookup rather than hard coding strings. It also lets you hunt around in your code to see where it is that you're talking to that other application. Because we're going to do login eventually. And login is another place. It's not in our application, but our application is going to have to generate login URLs by asking the login application, hey, what's the URL to log in? What's the URL to log out? And that's, that's where we'll mostly start doing this. So I want to talk about it now so when we get to log in and log out, you'll have that will make more sense to you. And it also is some of the stuff that you're doing uh, from the tutorials. Um, you're putting these reverse lookup things in and you may or may not know what they are. And my goal here is to give you a little sense of what really they're there for. So let's take a look at an example. So here we have our urls.py and most of it I mean, this is the application route, so if you're looking in the samples, it's in the route application. The main thing that we've added is some names. Names are here to look up these paths. We don't really want to look it up by this path mapping because that could actually change. So we're basically saying this view in, views dot, in your views.py, second view, is going to be referenceable by this second dash view. I named them differently very much on purpose. So here's what happens if you just go to the, uh, the route slash route. The, uh, the name of my application, it pulls up this main slash HTML. And so the first thing I want to show you is what a hard-coded URL looks like. Now we know that, you know, blah, 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 samples slash route slash second is going to go to that second view because the application's name is route and the view name is second. And that's good. That will work. It's, uh, it's not going to break, but this is where you lose flexibility as you try to recombine applications from one into the other. And so in a, in a sense, what we're asking to do here is we're going to instead use this URL utility. And so in our, in our template, we use percent, uh, curly brace percent, and then we're running a, a, a utility that's been plugged into the template system that is like when we're running the URL function, as it were, and we're going to pass a string to it, and that is within the route application, the view that is named second view. So that goes into this file, the route route urls.py, read down the views until it finds second view, and then it reverse generates the path that works for that. Now in this case, these two strings are going to be the same, and yes, that looks a little uglier, but the key is, is that we can make changes here, and this will not, the top one, route slash second, will not reflect the changes, but if we're looking it up by name, we can do all kinds of crazy things and remap stuff quite naturally. Um, and so again, it's just this URL command, the name of the, the view, the application, colon, the view. So this is what it looks like when it's all said and done. There's no parameters to this. So if you take a look at this, this route second view ends up under this hard-coded, uh, the route slash second view, the hard-coded ones, un ends up under the string in the, out in the URL output, I mean the page output. Um, we just see the 
it's slash route slash first is the thing that comes out from running the code URL and passing route colon first view in. So that's what it looks up. Um, and we can make a link. This is now an href and the actual, the actual path is sitting there in the href. So now we're going to see how we do this when we're going from one application to another. So an application we're going to look up, look at in just a bit is this thing called the generic views. It's an application called GView. And we want to make a link to that application. And we know that there are two views. There's a list view and a detail view. And all we have to do is go take a look at the URLs.py. And we know that it's an application, it's an application G view. And there's a this view has a name and that view has a name. The, the view that is all the cats is got a name of cats, and the view for a single cat is cat. But the cat one takes a parameter. It's an integer number, which is cat number 42 or whatever. And so we're sitting here in the route application, route application, main.html, and we can now go create a URL that actually is pointing to another application and a view within that other application. So this is a URL for GView cats, and that'll just look it up. So now we don't even have to know what the URL patterns are inside of GView slash cats. Now, we can look at gviewcat, which is this URL, but you'll notice that this has a parameter. And so we actually have to add a second parameter, which is that 42 number. And so this will generate the URL straight to the detail page for a single cat. Now, there's a lot of nice stuff about this. So for example, if you omit this, it's going to look this gviewcat up and find it and say, you know what, I'm supposed to have an integer and it'll blow up on you. Right, if you don't, if you get that wrong, or if you put a 42 on this one on the GView cats, you're not supposed to have a number on that. But GView cat, you are supposed to have a number. So this is one of the nice things about this reverse URL lookup in that we can. It, there's some error checking that goes on because if if it it could just blow up silently, and in many ways, when code blows up silently, it's worse than you know blowing up in a spectacular fashion. Because if it blows up in a spectacular fashion, you can fix it. <clears throat> So this is what it looks like. So this GView cats URL and GView cat 42, this one that actually is the detail page that demands a parameter, it constructs that just fine. Okay. So that's going from the route application to the GView application. Now you can also, this is kind of uh, subtle and we will need it when we start doing social login using GitHub. So I'll just mention it because we're deep in it right now. Um, and so, so basically this is actually the overall DJ free samples URLs.py and that's the one that's pulling all the URLs together kind of in the same folder as settings.py. And you, so, so you're pulling in a bunch of URLs and these live in an application of their own name, but we can actually give them a name of our own to reference them. So you can actually name them, you can reference them with the name they were already, already given by the application that we're talking to, or we can say, you know what, I'm going to call these social colon or NS route colon. So if we take this route application and include all those URLs, and we're going to use a namespace of NS route, you still can say route colon, or you can also say NS route. And so you can see that in this example, right? We can go to the second view of route, or we can go to the second view of NS. And so there's route Route is a way, one way in, but NS route is our own way in in case we somewhere have an application named route or something like that. And so this allows for a second way to access uh, these URLs using a namespace. And that's, it's in, it's not, it's not in the URLs.py in each application. It is in the URLs.py for the Django project. So I just finished showing you all that in the templates, but we can also do this in Python. And we'll find that sometimes in like models.py or views.py, or even sometimes in admin.py, we'll need to sort of be able to find a view in the same or another application and automatically construct it. Sometimes in the in forms.py, we're going to do it as well. And so this, you tend to call this reverse or reverse lazy to look these things up. And the URL feature inside of the template is pretty much just calling this reverse lazy uh, automatically because the parameters are kind of the same. So we'll just, I just want to show you how to do some of those things that I just showed you in templates, how you can do them in 
uh, uh, Python as well. So here's the one in templates. We just have this little plugin to a template called the URL plugin. It takes one parameter and looks up in, in the URLs.py of the first application, the URL named first view. Maybe there's parameters in this case, there's not, and then it generates a path to that slash route slash first, right? And so that's what it, how you do it. It's really under the covers calling this reverse lazy. And so these reverse and reverse lazy are, uh, are from the django.urls library. And so in this view, it's, there's nothing tricky about this view. It's just a class-based view. We have a get method. We pass in all the request stuff. But basically, we can call reverse lazy and pass it the exact same string, this exact same string, which is go into the GView application, work your way down until you find the cats, or go into the GView application, go in and find the one for dogs, or in this case, this is the dog detail, and it requires a number, and so this GView dog, go find that one, and then the second parameter is 42, so make me one for that. And in Python, u, u, u2, and u3 are all just strings, which I'm passing in through some context under the variables x1, x2, and x3. There are really lousy choices of variable names, but I do that sometimes to point out that they're arbitrary and capricious and all they have to do is match. And so then like the x1 matches in this substitution, now we're just doing string substitutions, which is different than calling the URL, but it's still just a bunch of strings. You called reverse lazy in your Python code, and now you're just pulling that string into with double curly braces. Um, and so this is how it ultimately works. We can, you know, we get these, we're just showing how this output turns out, where we go reverse lazy for GVU cats, GVU dogs, or GVU dog with an argument of 42. We pass it in, we replace it, and so this is how it prints out GVU cats slash GVU dog slash GVU dog uh, 42. And so that's how that reversing works in Python. And you'll see that certain situations, whether you're like in a model, sometimes you're in a model, it's very common in a model to want to put something about the reverse in it. And the reverse lazy says delay uh, until later to, uh, to look it up. So, so up next, we're going to put this all together and ultimately start writing using the generic views because we're going to look at list pages and detail pages. And in time, we're going to look about delete pages and update pages. And Django has these wonderful features that make it work really simply um, with very little code. Well, we want to talk about it because sometimes the less code you write, the harder it is to understand.